Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's me, Cameron, again. And welcome back to the rise and fall of M. Night Shyamalan. Kids go to stay with their grandparents, who suddenly start acting really bizarre when the sun goes down. Admittedly, not all that original. But if I had to review this film in just one word, it would either be unsettling or... I can't believe I'm about to say this. Bonkers. And I don't mean, like, the horror is unsettling and the humor is bonkers. I mean it works either way. The humor is unsettling and the horror is bonkers. As I said finishing my last M. Night video, when I first read about this film, it was listed as a horror comedy, but I wasn't seeing that advertised as much, and that got me worried because I thought, ugh, this is going to be the happening all over again. But a few months ago, I was at a viewing party for Sharknado 3, and they played the trailer for The Visit a lot during the commercials. So you would assume, in keeping company with something like Sharknado 3, that it, ha that it had to be somewhat comedic. And when the reviews finally started rolling in, many critics were commenting on both the horror and comedic aspects of it. Whether or not they think it's effective as either was not fully in agreement on. But they do acknowledge it. And following its early scores online, it certainly seemed that this was going to be a movie that would divide critics and audiences. Though there was a slight lean toward the positive side. And honestly, I'm leaning that way too. I enjoyed this film, I think M. Night made a lot of smart decisions, and I think this might be the start of his return. Now, not a lot is known about the filming of The Visit, because M. Night financed it himself using his fee he got for directing After Earth, so he was able to keep it very secretive and also keep out the interference from major studios. A bold move, and the same could be said of the delivery. Found footage is an interesting route for Shyamalan. It might even be called risky, considering that it hasn't been such a hot genre lately. Once the paranormal activity craze slowly died down, we haven't had a found footage movie from the last two or three years with a mostly positive feedback from critics, aside from maybe Unfriended. That being said, it's probably a smart choice money-wise. With a budget of only $5 million, it's not going to be hard for this thing to turn a profit. In Shyamalan's case, that's good. He needs more chances to get stuff out there. And as we all know from bad movies or lousy actors, sometimes turning a profit is all you need to be rehired. Whether or not people will be attracted to his name attached to any more projects depends more on the content of the movie itself, though. The setup for the found footage is that 15-year-old Rebecca and her 13-year-old brother Tyler are being sent to stay for a week with their single mother's estranged parents, grandparents they've never met, and Rebecca wants to make a documentary of their time there. It's a better setup than most found footage films, which... Eventually, you often start asking yourself, why are they still recording during this? Here, it makes sense why Rebecca wants to keep rolling. She wants to be a famous filmmaker, and she often is making, you know, innocently pretentious comments about filmmaking, and you know M. Night just loves including that, and some of them feel like they're even lightly making fun of himself. The younger brother Tyler aspires to be a rapper, and yeah, when I first heard that, I was like, okay, she'll be fine, but he's gonna be annoying as hell. But for the most part, it's played for laughs, and it never really got to the point where it was obnoxious. I mean, I can totally understand if other people find him annoying, but I don't think it got to the point where it was universally irksome. As seen with past Shyamalan films, the choice of child actors can make all the difference in films, depending on whether the kids are great, okay, a little off, or awful. While I doubt either one of these is going to get an Oscar nomination like Haley Joel Osment, they were both pretty damn good. They do a good job of embodying their personas. They have good chemistry as siblings, too. Considering half the film rests on them, that's a very good thing. A good portion of the other half of the film rests on the grandparents, or Nana and Pop Pop, as they're called. And they were both pretty good, too. They're able to be homey and inviting, and also be creepy and intimidating. They provide some of the humor, but most of the horror. Now, humor has never been Shyamalan's strongest point, and I'd, sometimes I would argue to say it's his, one of his weakest factors. Here, that's fine. It's not all laugh out loud, but it's a nice touch. The banter the kids have is pleasant, and the darker stuff had me laughing while questioning if I should be. It works in time with the scary stuff, which, like I said, is very unsettling and creepy with just how unpredictable the two grandparents are. With a few jump scares thrown in for good measure. The setting for the film is great. Once again, we're in or around Philadelphia, which is another train of Shyamalan's that stayed intact with this one. For the most part, we're at the snowy farm, and it's all very nice looking. And even though it's found footage, so we don't have any of Shyamalan's typical lighting, shadows, or cinematography, he still manages to get some really beautiful shots out of it. 
And the film isn't without its drama either. Rebecca wants to make this documentary for her mom as a way of giving her closure since she left her parents after having a huge fight. And Rebecca and Tyler both start to open up about how their dad walking out of them affected them both differently. So there's some heart to this too. I'm sure many of y'all are wondering this, and the answer is yes, there is a twist. And I'm going to try to keep this relatively spoiler-free, but first of all, it's not a twist ending. It's more of a twist into the third act, or the finale. And looking back, there are a lot of little subtle clues about it here or there, but it'll probably take another rewatching for me to see, because we all know that's what's so great about Unbreakable in the Sixth Sense, is that the twist ending seems so obvious during the second time around. The more I thought about it, the more I realized it's not that original. I've seen this same twist in different movies before, but it was it was still very effective here. There is a final message, and it runs that very fine line of subtly being there the whole time as opposed to shoehorned in at the last minute, but I don't think it ruins the film by any means. I won't give away the ending too much, but I will say this film actually has an ending, which is more than I can say for some found footage films. It's not a film where I could just look at it and say, yeah, that's Shyamalan. But if you told me it was his film, I wouldn't be that surprised. The Visit is a nice callback to his old formula of everyday people suddenly having encounters with the supernatural. Well, truth be told, there's really no supernatural in the film. It's just creepiness. But still, it makes more sense. It makes more sense than him directing Airbender or After Earth. It isn't perfect. It's not a home run hit. I wouldn't even say that it's my new favorite film by Shyamalan, but this film is a stepping stone for him, and I do believe he is back on the rise again. So, that's what I got on it, and yeah, I do recommend going to see this film. I recommend it to horror fans, Shyamalan fans, maybe even former Shyamalan fans. It might just win you back. So yeah, I had a good time watching this film. I hope you all do too. And until Labor of Love comes out, this is Cameron, signing out.